hi guys welcome back to my channel today i'm so excited i'm going to be talking about the new film spencer directed by pablo lorraine and i wanted to talk a little bit about the fashion in the movie in a new series hopefully called fashion in film where I'll just be looking at costume design in film and how that sort of evokes whatever emotional journey characters are going through I think it's a really cool thing to look at uh, if you want to know my th thoughts on the movie Spencer I will link uh, my review for the film which I'm doing on my film channel so watch that review and subscribe there but now we're just going to be talking a bit about the fashion in the movie so Spencer is a sort of fictional imagining of three days during Christmas in the early 90s and the thing that really sort of jumps out at you besides Kristen Stewart's incredible performance and just how beautiful and how incredibly realized the story is is the costume design it's such a pivotal part not, not only of the film but it's such, such an important part of Diana herself she was somebody that really liked fashion but at the same time used um, fashion as a way to rebel from the sort of like aristocrat society that she was in. This is something we really get to see in the film. And so in the film, the film opens with Diana driving herself to where they will all be staying for three days. And in this sequence we can see she's wearing a red and green tartan laser the costume designer Jacqueline Duran who I've talked about on this channel who did the costumes for Cruella but also of course the iconic atonement green dress as well as costume designs for little women and Anna Karenina she describes um, in the articles that I read about how Diana wore a lot of plaid around that time so they wanted to sort of recreate that through this look and it's a really sort of cool blazer. Diana herself was a lover of Chanel and Jacqueline wanted to sort of bring that through with the entire sort of costume design but also Stan Stewart is a Chanel ambassador so it was really easy for them to create these looks and work with Chanel. A third of all the clothes that Kristen wears are actually vintage Chanel which is so cool to see um, things that they were able to take from the archives and then everything else is sort of a recreation and looks that are obviously heavily inspired by Diana. For Diana's first dinner outfit, she wears a 1930s inspired emerald green empire waist gown. And we have the scene where um, she is being dressed as she always is and has specific outfits for each day but she tells her dresser that she this gown doesn't fit with her mood that she should actually wear black and already this sort of immediately signifies to us how much of a kind of rebel she is but also how true she is to her own instincts and to her own sort of self that she just wants to do what she wants to do but eventually she acquiesces and does in fact wear the green dress to the dinner throughout the 
film we see this really sort of haunting uh depressing motif with the use of pearls and the way that this is linked to Anne Boleyn um, there's just a lot of parallels between Diana and Anne Boleyn which are made in the film which I really really loved the ways in which the pearls are used uh, becomes this juxtaposition between something that is so beautiful and pure and sort of delicate and when she has them around her neck she sort of feels really sort of constricted by these pearls and they obviously sort of signify disillusion and everything that's going wrong in her marriage with Charles because obviously as we learn in the film Charles gifted his mistress the exact same set of pearls so it just becomes this thing for Diana that actually really sort of haunts her and depresses her and we can see this incredible dinner sequence something that is a really great visual symbolism in the film is the idea of Anne Boleyn Diana reads this book about Anne Boleyn and she sort of becomes really haunted by the ghost of Anne Boleyn throughout this film um, and there's a connection between Anne Boleyn, who was beheaded by her husband, Henry VIII, because he said that she was having an affair, when in fact he was the one having an affair. So of course we can see this sort of uh, link between this idea of Diana feeling like this institution might actually um, hurt her. It's a really tragic way of showing this connection between the two women in history. It just pervades the film and adds a horrific horror element to the movie and the film does play with that. There are a lot of fictional um, fantastical horror sequences that are just so well done. The way that Anne Boleyn herself is realized and we can see the sort of Tudor style gown that she wears is just and the way that all these different her jewelry and the pearls are actually sort of stifling her and constricting her just in the same way that they do with Diana. This is really great like link to these women that feel so locked up and then of course we have the big uh gown moment with this sort of cream and gold uh tool gown the strapless tool gown that diana wears towards the end of the film and it is a dress that she is supposed to wear on um, one of the big dinner nights with the entire royal family but instead we can see that she actually just wants to sort of break away and she tries to leave where they are staying. This was a gown that was a, a recreation from a vintage Chanel piece in their archives and it's just such a beautiful beautiful dress and has this sort of gorgeous yet still incredibly haunted aspect to uh, the movie and we can see that this is where Diana has her big sort of emotional breakdown in this dress. Throughout the film Jacqueline Duran uses costume design in a way that is so outstanding and she said herself that she did not want the outfits to wear Kristen but rather she wanted Kristen to wear the outfits and she just wanted all the looks to sort of help the emotional arc of what Diana was going through without 
them sort of taking the spotlight and I think that there is a really great balance between all the different outfits and how they're able to tell Diana's emotions, her feelings, whether she's feeling stifled, whether she is feeling free and we can really see that being represented in the final scene of the film where she leaves with her children and her outfit is much more laid back she's just wearing a simple t-shirt a baseball cap just really really chill and almost sort of masculine boyish tomboyish style that we can really sort of see how free and liberated this makes her feel she's finally free of even for a little moment, she is free from the constrictions of being a royal and she just is out in the world um, just living a normal life, even if it's just for a moment. And so there's a sort of ominous tone throughout the entire film, of course, but in this final scene, we really get to see Diana finally a bit maybe content, a bit happy at the end of the day she's with her children and that's the most important thing to her. So of course it's so amazing to see how the costume design in the film so wonderfully evokes all these different feelings and the arc that she goes through. So yeah, those were my little thoughts on the fashion in the film Spencer. I absolutely, absolutely love this movie. Uh, you should definitely, definitely see this movie. I would highly recommend it. More on my thoughts in my review, link below. If you like this video, uh, subscribe to my channel course and maybe tell me what your favorite outfits in the film were or something you really liked about the film i really 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 love that cream and gold gown i just think it's so stunning but yeah uh thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye